anybody that knows your artwork can look at it and say, oh, that's a panel. There's always this... I, you know, it's, it's really funny because I don't... I don't... Uh, uh, back, in the, back in the late 60s, uh, and, and mostly in the early 70s, when I decided that, that I was going to stay with some part of the, of the composition, something in the composition was going to remain constant because I wanted some continuity from piece to piece to piece right and I chose the profile simply because it was the easiest form and I knew that I was going to be doing figures so that was an obvious form that was going to be repeated so I chose something that was that is traditionally native in the sense of it has no perspective it's flat it's simple uh, and, and then stay with that and consistently do it. Well, I didn't know that it was going to become, you know, identified with me. It's a know, signature it's almost yeah, now. Signature. Yeah. And you know, and some people ask, well, are you ever going to change that? I said, well, you know, I don't have a need to change. Right. You know, I mean, I I do. I've done other things, but I don't see that that uh, that there is a need uh, to. Uh, to make changes on that particular uh, format. You know, what's really interesting and very challenging is that probably one of the hardest things is to maintain something continuously. That continuity. You keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it, keep, I mean, I've been doing the same profile for over 30 years. Right. You know, so. Well, and I'm always finding something exciting and something unique with each time that I sit down and I compose. Now, I've seen you do some of your work on, um, I believe there were some hand drums that you had done also? Yes, I, I painted some drums because I really like, well, it, the first one I ever did, it was because it was, uh, I wanted to do something unique for an auction. So I decided that this was so different right. uh, for me to work on surface-wise and so forth that I, I went ahead and did it and I, in the process I really liked Again, you're adjusting to a surface, not only the fact that it was round, right. but also it was a working surface that was very different than what I'd ever done. So right off the bat, just those two elements, the shape of the drum, the scale, the size of the drum, the surface of the drum, which was uh, uh, buffalo, uh, and then I chose acrylic as a medium, and so I, I, I noticed how all of this had to come together. And in the process, I really like what came out. So I told myself, yeah, I'm going to do this again. Right. And again, so I did it a few other times. It's not something that I that I really feel like I need to be doing all the time. Right. I'm actually, at this point, actually collecting a series of drums that I want to paint. I want to do a whole series just because I, I, I you know, it's a, it's a nice departure from what I normally do. And if I'm going to do that, if I'm going to depart from what I normally, that would be a good way to go. Have you, well, have you done anything on a larger scale, um, uh, just like on a full buffalo hide? You know when? No. You, yeah, no, never, never done it from that perspective. You know? Yeah. Because what I what I really enjoyed was the contrast on on the drum as far as that the, the colors that, and the, the surface, hide. Yeah, that makes a difference. You know, it's again that colored surface determines the palette that you're going to work on. Right. So it's, it's like you know, and that's what makes the work interesting. Is that just uh, like your whole philosophy changes because you're not working on a canvas or you're not working on a paper, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, you know, so you adapt to that, and the end result, you know. You want it to come out and, and you want that composition to be effective, to make a statement, and you want the palette to make a statement. You know, if we can put all of those elements together, then, then you know, it's going to work. Well, so. you've been around this long. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, you keep trying. I mean, you gotta, yeah. you got to be able to, you know, you have to be able to find in interest in what you're doing. I enjoy what I'm doing. I have fun with the work. And the fact that, that I can... Uh, make a decision where I I want to paint on a rock or I want to paint on a you know on a, on a drum or I want to paint on a piece of clay or I want to paint you know they, when I can make that choice right. it's it's healthy you know, right. it's, it's, it's a lot of fun well, you're not stuck to one one thing I'm not I'm not stuck to, to one particular you know and 
and again, you're always thinking, what possibilities are there? Um, because you are making the switch, you know, where surface, scale, uh, palette, whatever it is. What's the largest painting you've ever done? I've done one mural. You did? And Where's that at? It's at a Paso Community College in El Paso, Texas. Oh. Yeah. That's the biggest piece I've ever done. And was that acrylic also? That's all acrylic. Yeah. Done in sections. I did it in panels. Oh. It's about 29 feet by 14 feet tall. Oh. And how long did it take you to do that? Almost three years. So, you still have your ears? I see nobody chopped off your no, ear. Nobody chopped off your ear. <laughs> you know, this is my favorite artist. Look at all this stuff on the bottom. A little bit for everybody, you know. That's one nice thing about it. One nice thing that I've learned in the process of that just creating is the fact that you can do so many different things. And, and you know, when I, when I decide to do something like placemats, like this, I mean, it's, it's not... I mean, it's it's it's, it's there's, a, there's a there's a it's a placement, but the integrity to design for that is where it's the value. So is. that was intentional. Then I yeah, mean, very, you decided oh, yeah, you're yeah, going to do a placement. Yeah, designed to do this. It's not so much that the end product is going to be this, but the the whole idea that I could do this right and make it work right. And yeah. it's still art. The thing is, I can't imagine using it. I would never want to. Yeah, use well, it. some people actually frame them. You know, <laughs> my, nice my mother, my mother, when she was alive, she used them every day. <laughs> so you know, <laughs> bless mom, her heart. They make some more. Yeah, I would. But yeah, mom can you to get them. <laughs> yeah. <That's you> right. <laughs> so was the refrigerator full of your work then? Or? Uh, not really. <laughs> no. But they had it. My, my both my mom and dad uh, yeah. have now passed on, but. Uh, through the later years, they they were very proud of the work, and they had they had every wall in their house. Now, were your mother, covered. father, or have any artistic abilities, or did well, they ever show? You know, I always tell people that that on my mother's side of the family, there was a lot of creativity. Right. Not so much artistic in the sense of as we know a painter. Or, right. Uh, but there was a lot of creativity. My mother uh, was a seamstress and didn't use any patterns. She just made them up. She measured the, the, the client and developed the, designed the piece and developed the piece accordingly to that. So I, to me, that's, a, that's create, creative. Right. His, uh, her father, my grandpa, uh, he was a farm worker, but in his spare time, he just made things. He saw things, he saw a piece of wood and saw a potential to do something with it and he did it without even thinking that it was going to be a piece of artwork you right. know, or, or something like even making a, a hammer yeah. you know which I'm very proud that I have one of the hammers that he made wow. where he found the object and got the hammer head and carved them I mean he was always making things so from that standpoint you're you know they were creative genes in that side of the family right. because in my family I'm like the only paint I mean to artists in this category per se right. but my sister writes she's very creative that way what type of writing is she doing she writes poetry and, and is she uh, published also we published the, actually i don't have the book here we published her first major publication was a, a set of poetry with my artwork and what's her name irene irene Kenya. Kenya. yeah the name of the book is called two voices oh, okay so, so that's that's where i think it comes from the fact that that uh, uh, you're able to, you know, to have a certain, because creativity is so different than, than being, than having a skill. You know, the skills are developed through experience and, and, and the doing, but creativity comes from a lot of different sources. Right. You know, and on my gravestone, that's hopefully will be quoted there, that I made a difference in people's life. Why shopping here? When I get the chance and I get the opportunity to talk to people, I always, you know, you open the door and you let me in, you're in trouble. <laughs>